Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Thursday, 2nd May, 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. IMF has no intention of reclassifying Caribbean countries regarding their income status. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Reclassification of Caribbean countries as high and middle income, unlikely. Andre Huey of SKN Newsline has this comprehensive report. Reclassification of Caribbean islands from high- and middle-income countries so as to attract concessional financing to address issues of climate change does not appear to be a priority for multilateral groups such as the IMF. Caribbean countries have long complained that the metrics used to classify them as high- and middle-income countries is not a correct measurement of what is happening on the ground in these islands. But when the question was posed to the director of the IMF Western Hemisphere Department, Rodrigo Valdez, in a recent press conference, he conceded that the classifications are based on rules already set. He was asked the question by SKN Vibes' Jermaine Abel. Uh, there has been a concern, and just recently during this week, the Minister of Finance, specifically within uh, St. Vincent, raised this concern. Reclassification, is there any consideration by the IMF to reclassify them as not necessarily being high-income earning countries, specifically when they're going to be affected by um, hurricane. Well, there are no plans to change our, our definitions of which country uh, is either, which is not one, who, who has concessional lending, etc. Those are rules that are, are given. But we understand that there is an interesting discussion about other measures of vulnerability. Now, there is no consensus on that. Uh, so really is... Uh, discussion ongoing. And very importantly, we're pretty flexible when we design programs. When we design programs, we take into account vulnerability. And part of our, our advice to the region, to the Caribbean region, is given the effect of natural disasters that happen there in terms of how often and how big, it's very important to uh, have fiscal space to tackle that. In preparation, so this measure of uh, this 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 uh, recommendation of fiscal of fiscal restraint in the short run to build up uh, space to build up buffers applies squarely also to to the Caribbean. In an interview with the SK Newsline at the IMF World Bank Spring Meetings recently, Finance Minister of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines Camillo Gonzalez lamented that organizations like the World Bank and the IMF were not accurately measuring the wealth of Caribbean countries, which placed them at a disadvantage. If you look at the per capita GDP, per capita GNI, you would think that everybody in St. Kitts is wealthy. But that's not the case. It's that you have a, an amount of money divided by a very small number of persons, so it's a misleading number that, that is created. Similarly, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with 110,000 people, um, income per capita is not a measure in the, in the Caribbean context, in a small state context, of wealth. Meanwhile, Valdez had a good assessment of Caribbean economies regarding economic growth. Well, the Caribbean region has done, as the rest, pretty well in the last uh, few years. If you would have put the shocks that were coming five years ago in the future, I would have been very worried. And reality is that the economy is recovered. The Caribbean region went back to activity levels pre-COVID. Uh, some countries are growing faster than others. Uh, Particularly to notice uh, Uyana, uh, strong, very strong uh, growth. But there are others too, no? The, um, 
the group of countries that are more tourism dependent rebounded very quickly and are normalizing. And the following message is valid for all countries in the region. We're going back to normal growth. If we want more growth, what is needed is to work through the underpinnings of long-term growth with reforms of different, different types. And that's critical as a message for, for the Caribbean too. The IMF has reported that the St. Kitts and Nevis economy grew by 3% over the past year, and the strong growth is expected for 2024. I'm Andre Huey for SKN Newsline. Andrew Lidley of CVM Business reports that the IMF cautioned central banks against cutting policy interest rates. Now, while the private sector is lobbying the Bank of Jamaica to cut its indicative policy interest rate, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, is advising central banks to keep rates where they are for now. The BOJ's policy interest rate is currently 7%. That rate has remained unchanged since November 2022. According to the central bank, it hasn't changed because inflation has been outside of the target 4-6% to range. But it also means consumers and businesses are paying higher interest rates at banks and other deposit-taking institutions. It's why private sector groups are constantly lobbying the BOJ to lower its policy interest rate. Those calls are getting louder with news from Statin that point-to-point inflation in March was 5.6%, which is within the central bank's target range. But still, no change. The International Monetary Fund now urging central banks globally to keep that stance. Policymakers must resist calls for premature interest rate cuts because premature easing can see new inflation surprises that may even necessitate a further bout of monetary tightening. And we have to recognize on the other side, delaying too long could pour cold water on economic activity. Kristalina Gorgi, a managing director of the International Monetary Fund, she says the world is recovering, but not out of the woods just yet. It is tempting to breathe a sign of relief. We have avoided the global recession and a period of stagflation. Some have predicted it. It has not happened. But there are still plenty of things to worry about. The global environment has become more challenging. The BOJ indicated recently it's watching the inflation numbers over the upcoming months to assess the extent to which the current level of inflation will be sustained before making a determination on whether to change the bank's monetary policy stance. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Haiti's Transitional Council working to rebuild governance and end violence. Alex Hogan of Fox News reports. In the first week since its formation, Haiti's Transitional Presidential Council is taking steps to stop violence across the country. It comes after at least 50,000 people have fled the capital of Port-au-Prince. Fox News correspondent Alex Hogan has the latest. After months of gang violence in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, the newly installed Transitional Council is trying to establish peace across the country. Over the weekend, the group announced plans to vote for Haiti's next president on Tuesday. It comes as a large number of people continue to flee the violence. According to the U.N., about 90,000 people have left the capital since the start of the year. The new leaders are now facing pressure to quickly secure food, jobs and security for those who stayed behind. It is insecurity that brought us to where we are today. A country without security is a country where we cannot do anything. The nine-member council was installed at a ceremony last Thursday where Haiti's prime minister officially resigned. But as the group begins to work, Haiti's national police remain overwhelmed by violent gangs who shuttered the airport 
government buildings and roads in Port-au-Prince last month. The council's formation is seen as a step toward a bigger goal of deploying a multinational security mission to the country, which the former prime minister requested two years ago. Until that happens, the Biden administration says that it's sending aid to Haiti's police. We were able to deliver uh, the first shipment of U.S. government non-lethal equipment to the Haitian National Police to bolster their capabilities. The Transitional Council's mandate ends in February of 2026, when a new president is expected to be sworn in. In London, Alex Hogan, Fox News. House of Assembly in the Bahamas discuss Haiti deployment. In other news this evening, amid internal pressure and chaos in Haiti, some question what real power its recently sworn in transitional council will have and is multinational intervention, of which the Bahamas is a part, is wise. The concerns of Killarney MP, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, who in the face of Haitian gangs reportedly morphing into well-armed militias, charge that any intervention will initially will initially rather involve heavy fighting. The Prime Minister must not send Bahamian troops into the violent chaos in Haiti with no clear plan. There is no political consensus in Haiti as to the way forward. No progress is possible until the various Haitian elites and political factions come to consensus. We risk the lives of our young people, our young men and women, if we send them to Haiti in an irresponsible manner. Kenya's pullback gives this administration the space to reconsider its commitment of 150 security personnel. No intervention force can succeed in Haiti if Haitians are unclear as to how they are to be governed over the long term. Flatly rejecting such claims, Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable Fred Mitchell accused the FNM MP of pure scaremongering. You think in your wildest imagination the Bahamas government is going to send troops from the Bahamas into a danger zone where they're not going to, where they're going to be in a killing field? That can't happen. It's impossible. But the country has international obligations. It has obligations to its domestic uh, theater, which it has to carry out. It is sensible for us to have a policy to know what is going on in Haiti and to influence what is going on there. It's our neighborhood. And just like we'd be looking over the fence at our neighbor next door, we're doing the same thing, except it's a nation. And it is not true to say that Haiti has collapsed. There's a great deal of back and forth going on there politically. There's a, there's, a, there's a fighting going on. They're trying to settle what their politics is. But Bahamas Air flies into uh, Cape Haitian three times a week. Bahamas' Prime Minister rejects U.S. Human Rights Report rubbishing it all together. In other news this evening, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis flatly rejecting the findings of a U.S. human rights report on how women are treated here in the Bahamas. The recently released 2023 report accuses the Bahamas government of contributing to statelessness through discrimination against women in nationality laws. Prime Minister Davis reasoning that the issue should be looked at through the perspective of our eyes. Haven women being uh, unfairly treated in the Bahamas. You all ruling us, man. If you look at if you look at the hierarchy of the public service, more than eighty percent of it is predominated by females. Look at look at industry. In fact, in fact, men have become an endangered species in this country, and I'm concerned about that. <laughs> I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity.
Killian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. 